We have, for the last few weeks, been going through these steps along the journey of becoming the people of God. Starting with birthing in the waters of baptism and the waters of creation, and then listening and responding, and then last week, discerning. To put this into Wesleyan theological language, we started with provenient grace, which is the grace that God pours into our lives before we know anything about God, before we even know anything about ourselves, we recognize that God is pouring grace into us. And then we moved into justifying grace when we hear God and respond to God. And then last week, I think we started to make the movement into sanctifying grace, where we are formed in the image of Christ. And we continue to talk about sanctifying grace this morning, because this morning, the invitation we hear, the step of the journey that we hear, is the step where we have to pay attention. I call these steps in the journey, but I do that because I don't have any better language for it. I think it gives us a false sense though that maybe everyone goes through the same steps in the same way, in the same direction all the time. But I think life is maybe a little murkier than that. Maybe there is no set step along the journey that says we go from this place to this place to this place and then we find out we have been perfected in the love of God. Maybe life is a little more confusing, a little more messy than that. But I use the language of steps in a journey because that is the best way I can describe it. But I don't want you to think that it's not okay to get fixated at one part of the journey and stay there for years of your life, because that's fine. There's sacredness in all parts of this journey. And I don't want you to think you have to keep going along this journey, you can never go back. Because sometimes there is sacredness in taking a step back and starting again. We come though today to what I call the last step on the journey, but again, I don't want us to think that this is necessarily some place that we end. This is just some place that we get to and we go from here. But this is the step I call paying attention. I told you last week I didn't like discernment. I don't like paying attention either. But part of the reason for that is because all of us pay attention in different ways. And your way of paying attention might look a lot different than my way of paying attention. I think particularly back to when I was in college, I still used a pen and paper to take notes for most of my college time. They do it on a computer now. I could never do that because I would be so distracted. But one of the ways that I would pay attention would be that I would have to be doing something with my hands, and usually that was doodling in the margins of the paper I was writing on. And I remember one time I had a professor challenge me if I was paying attention by saying, what did I just say? Casey, what did I just say? And hand to God, I could not tell you what she had said. I knew what she was talking about but I could not tell you what she had just said. Because my way of paying attention wasn't to pay attention to every single word that was said. My way of paying attention was to pay attention to what was being said. And I think all of us have that point where we pay attention differently. There is sacredness in paying attention, however you do it. Whatever your way of paying attention in the world is, there is sacredness in paying attention. I like the way Isaiah talks about it. Have you not been told, Isaiah writes? Have you not heard? 
Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? I have tried this past week to hear anything but frustration in that. Isaiah writing that in any tone that wasn't frustrated at somebody for not paying attention, and I can't do it. I keep hearing that voice of frustration. Aren't you paying attention to what's going on? Haven't you been focusing on the things that are important? I confess, maybe there's a way of reading those words as the triumph of God coming through, but all I can hear is frustration at people not paying attention. Over the next few minutes, I want to share three ways to pay attention. Three ways to see sacredness of paying attention. I don't want to tell you how to do it. I want you to figure that out on your own. But I want to share three maybe modes of paying attention in the world. And they're all going to tie back to the two scripture readings that we had this morning. The first one is that we are called to pay attention to God. And Isaiah invites us to do this by saying, wait on the Lord. There is such a harmful way to hear those words. Because a lot of times people hear the words, wait on the Lord, and their inclination is to wait for God to do something. So you sit back, you put your hands together, but you don't put your hands together in prayer. You start doing one of these things. You start twiddling your thumbs, waiting for God to do something. I can't tell you how disappointed you will be in life if you're waiting on the Lord, waiting on God, is waiting for God to show up and do something for you. I can't think of a more disappointing outcome to a relationship with God than one that is based on you sitting back and waiting for God to show up. Instead, I want us to think about waiting on God as not waiting for God to do something, but discerning, growing a deeper understanding of where God has already been active. I want us to see as we wait on God that we discover that God has been in our midst all along. The waiting becomes contemplative rather than anticipatory. It becomes a way of focusing ourselves on where God has shown up rather than disappointing ourselves by not seeing God in all things. When we wait on God, when we pay attention to God, we discover that God is in our midst right here, right now, in our lives today all around us, infused in the very ground that we stand upon, in the air that fills our lungs, in our very being is the presence of God. Isaiah discovered this, that in paying attention to God, we discover that God is deeply part of the world, deeply part of our lives, has been from the beginning and will be to the end. When we pay attention to God, we get more and more deeply involved in seeing sacredness in everything. We see the sacredness of God in every breath that we take. We see the sacredness of God in every stone that we step on. We see the sacredness of God in every friendship that we cultivate. But we also see the sacredness of God in every challenge that we face, in every adversity that comes against us, in all that is and in all that has been. 
we discover the sacredness of God. So that's the first mode of paying attention, paying attention to God. The second mode is paying attention to one another. And to do this, I want us to skip into the gospel reading this morning and meet Simon's mother-in-law. They come to her house. Jesus is informed that she is ill. Jesus goes and does his Jesus-y thing and heals her. And she gets up and what is the first thing she does? She serves them. I would complain, oh, I still don't feel so great. No, she jumps up and serves. And I want you to notice how that is so different from every other healing story that we get in scripture. Because in scripture, we have several reactions to people that are being healed by Jesus. One, they jump up and praise Jesus, praise you, praise you. One, they jump up and run away. One, They don't do anything, and Jesus says, this was just a sign so that you would believe. But in Simon's mother-in-law, she does something unique. She jumps up and starts to serve them, and I don't think she was doing that because she was bored and had nothing else to do. I think she did that because she saw their need. Just as she had a need that was fulfilled by Christ, she sees that Christ and the disciples have a need that she can fulfill. So she gets up and serves them. In the church, we took that word serve and we did something beautiful with it. We took it from the Greek and we brought it into Latin and I think we brought it into German and then we finally got it into English and we called it deacon. And in the church, we made a special role that we called the deacons. People whose entire mission in the church was to serve others. And it all started with Simon's mother-in-law, the first deacon of the church, who saw the need of others and met it with her service because she was paying attention to others. I can't tell you how many times I go through the world paying absolutely no attention to my surroundings. Or at least minimal attention to my surroundings. That's probably why I trip so often. But one of the modes of paying attention, one of the ways that we act sacredly by paying attention is by seeing the needs around us and responding to them. The final mode of paying attention is paying attention to ourselves. After healing Simon's mother-in-law, what does Jesus do? He goes away. He separates himself out for a little while. I call it self-care, I don't know what Jesus called it, but he recognizes that he needed a moment to step away. What a sacred invitation that we have. That not only do we pay attention to God, not only is it sacred to pay attention to one another, but it is sacred to pay attention to our own well-being. The well will run dry if we don't. If we are constantly focused outward and never inward, if we never care for ourselves, the well will run dry. So that is a sacred mode of paying attention to look inward and saying, what do I need to care for myself? Pay attention to God, pay attention to others, pay attention to self. All of these are ways of experiencing the grace of sanctification. All of these are ways that we become more Christ-like. All of these are ways that we become the people of God. Folks, let's pray together. 
God, in prayer this morning, we stretch ourselves out like the eagle stretching the wings, ready for flight into the world. Lord, help us be in the world as the people of God. Help us carry sacredness with us. Help us to remember that we are works in progress. Help us to remember that everyone we meet is a work in progress. Help us remember that everyone we meet is okay being a work in progress. And help us remember that everywhere we go, we are seeing the sacredness of God. I pray in Christ's name. Amen.